Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Jesse DePlant is here. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Last week, we preached a sermon entitled The Two Kinds of Christians, Part 1. This is Part 2. Now, I want you to listen to this statement. You know, it's possible to be in a church, yet not in the church. Think about that for a minute. A lot of people are churchy, but do they know the Lord Jesus Christ? Ah, you know, Satan never misses a service because he comes to disturb. Think about that. So this is part two. Call a friend, tell him to turn that television on. Get a pencil and paper. I'm telling you, you're going to learn these things because you're going to meet these kind of people in every church you go in. The two kinds of Christians, part two. Watch, be blessed. Write this down. We must hold the truth concerning the person and work of Jesus Christ. You must hold that truth concerning the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Good works are the evidence of godliness. See, good works are the evidence of godliness. We must, let me say it again, we must hold the truth concerning the personal, the person and work of Jesus Christ. And good works are the evidence of godliness. Now, you know, when people come in, that's why I named it Covenant Church. When Kathy said, the Lord told us to build a church. I said, he ain't tell me. Say, I'm a traveler. I travel all the time. She said, you just ain't listening. Listen now. He just told you. I said, is his name Kathy? <laughs> yes, she was right. I didn't want to build a church. I wanted to build a chapel, a small chapel for my staff. And I would invite guests to come, you know, friends of mine, come speak to my uh, staff. I'll, I'll bless you with a great offering. Uh, take you around New Orleans, get you some good food, blah, blah, and forget about all that. You go to the church you want here, because, you know, church is a trouble. <laughs> Am I t How many of you people have seen trouble in church? Oh, yeah, no. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Because there's a bunch of di diatrophies. How do you say that name? Diatrophies? <laughs> Let's call him Big D. Diatrophies, whatever his name. See? And you, it just gets irritating. But it's so refreshing when you walk into a church and somebody notices you and they say, Hello, thanks for coming today. Is there anything we can do for you? There's just something nice about that, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Because that's Christ in you. That's the person of Christ and what he spoke and what he believes. That's the creed. And the practical life should go together. I mean, you, you ought to better put a razor blade between the two. Because of the closeness of that. So we must hold the truth, the truth concerning the person and work of Jesus Christ. Good works are the evidence of godliness. This is a godly place. It is. It really is. Uh, when you look, you can sense God is permeated in, in the drywall, in the carpet. Do you know I was criticized for this carpet? You know what they say it? They said, now that's just too expensive to put in a church. That ought to go to the Ritz-Carlton. Let me just give you my, my, my statement. Yo, mama, the Ritz-Carlton, that's a piece of trash compared to God's house. But that's just a lot of money. You can never spend too much money on God's house. Now, some of you, you don't believe that because you know why you ain't been to heaven and it look like you ain't going anyway. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me here. When you get to heaven, you, this here, this is poverty. When you walk in heaven, you're walking on transparent gold. Yeah. Ooh, look, you want to see color? You want to see red? You ain't never seen red till you see it in heaven and blue and purple and green. Oh, my God. Pearly gates so big, knock your socks off. Foundations of diamond, barrel, jasper, onyx, ruby. Ruby. Big rubies. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 1, be ye therefore imitators of God. That's in his work, his works, everything. It's called excellence. You won't go anywhere in heaven where there's paint peeling. Long grass. Weeds, no weeds. You ready for this? No dust. None. You got to go. So when I built this, I said, no, I'm putting this. And I forget the person said, but you know, the guy I bought, do you know how much this costs, Reverend? I said, are you paying for it? 
He said, no, sir. I said, I am. Order it. Now, this thing is over 20-something years old. It looks like it was put yesterday. And I thank God that's because of my maintenance staff. We take care of God's house. It's called infrastructure. What's that guy? See, see how she, I have to go over and see. See, she wants to talk when I'm preaching. Housekeeping too. I ain't finished yet, Kathy. Just let me keep going. I'll get there. <laughs> she want to make sure I recognize everybody. Housekeeping. Keeping house. Hey, hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Because they do just a fine job. So we look around and we see a little rust part. We start fixing things. I've had people say, God, look like you built this thing two years ago or a year ago. Well, there's some things that you know, we try to get to as fast as we can. And God just blesses his place. We're supposed to. It's a representative. Everything we do, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial, is a representation of who Christ is. The hope of glory. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's St. John 14, verses uh, 13, and then 14, uh, verse 12, 13, and 14. Write this down. It is possible to be in a church, yet not in the church. There are a lot of people today looking at me, all, you know, watching all over the world. Put me on this camera here. Thank you. You're in a church, but you're not in the church. Thank God that we can stream today that some people can get in the church. But let me help all you that are sitting on your butt and you should be here because <laughs> you're worried about that COVID. You mean to tell me the COVID-19? What about COVID-6? Ever heard of him? COVID-7, COVID-8, COVID-9. There's all different ones. But greater is he who is in you than he is in COVID. You understand? Well, it's supposed to be caught in God. You go to heaven. What's wrong with that? Now, you see, that just makes no sense at all. The Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Some of you need to open your churches. You need to. It's not a church thing. It's a God thing. Thank God that we can stream live. It's called live and stream, stream, whatever you call that crazy, live stuff. That's great. But what's happening right now, right now, let me just say, this couple is pushing anointing to Daryl and his wife. Push, you pulling from him. You pulling from her. She's pulling from you. This corporate anointing, bam, it's hitting you. Bam, bam, bam. It's going all over. And you're just doing this. The anointing is way stronger physically here. Thank God it goes through the camera. Thank God that it does. That's why Jesus said, forsake not the ascending of yourselves. You see what I'm saying? That's why we never shut anything down. And, and we knew, they said, don't come. So I just preached to the camera, you know, at second best. Think about that for a minute. See, that's the kind of Christian you should be. That's God's house. This is the day the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. See what I'm saying? Instead of saying, well, I'll tell you what, I wish I'd have church on Sunday. I could sleep longer. You know you can sleep better on Sunday. The best nap you'll ever receive this week is this afternoon. Sunday naps are just wonderful. You know why? It's a day of rest. A rest from the world, not a rest from God. See, the Lord rested on the seventh day, not because he was tired, it's because he was finished. Do you see that? Ah, so it's possible to be in a church, yet not in the church. Oh, should I do that, Lord? Yes. I'm going to use this couple as my example. They used to be at a church. Am I right? Not being critical, just being truthful. No, nobody said hello, goodbye, nothing. Am I correct? That's right. Now, God didn't just tell me that. We, we talked to them just a little bit. But since they've been here, I saw all I ever see them is smiling. Because when you walk in this place, go, hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what can we do for you? You know, you meet Pastor Ron, hey, man, I preach so hot I can fry eggs at the men's ministry. <laughs> Pray, that's good. It's a blessing, right? Yes, yeah. Hmm. Where the, what about you, sir? Y'all just got here too. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. I, what's your name? Mike. Hey, Mike, Jesse the Plants. How you doing? You, I have no germs. You can shake my hand. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm going to wipe my hands all over you. No, no. I, just, I have no germs. I'm all right. Praise the Lord. See what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Feel good here, don't you? Why? We have no malice here. 
We have no strife here. All right, you ready for this? We have no sin here. Somebody shout. Listen to me. That's what John is talking about. About Gaius and Demetrius. Now, Satan always plants something. And he does it through pride. Sometimes you lift people up and it goes to their head. Then it blows their head off. I have some spiritual sons of all nationality, color, and creed. And one of my great sons, and I'll just say it, was Steve, it's Steve Allen. I like Steve. Got a great church. He's a blessing. He couldn't get over how I treated him. He said, you know, I feel like the Lord would have you be my spiritual father. Uh, in Houston's, many, many years ago, I said, and the Lord said, receive him. Now, I'm going to say something. He knows that's what I'm going to say. Uh, and he, he just couldn't get over how nice. I said, well, what can I do for you? What? You mean, what can I do for you? No, no. I'm the dad. So I make jokes. I said, I had Steve when I was 12. <laughs> you make a joke like that. Now watch this. I said, Steve, the reason why you don't understand my spiritual father in this because you never had one. You had a master. You do what I tell you to do or shut up. And with everything going wrong, when houses are being blown away and floods are coming through Hurricane Katrina, make sure you give me them tithe. Whew. I'm just being honest here. Now, if that makes somebody mad, you need to get mad. Because your name may start with a D. Because, see, I'm about ready to get to that part now. You see, now it's very prevalent in the church, diatrophies. Why? Why? Because where is the perfect places on the planet? Churches. Satan is trying to infect that and shut it down. You see what I'm saying? I mean, think about that. You can't sing because of the COVID. But you can breathe carbon dioxide. <laughs> Women, I see them breaking out. That's telling you something. Mm, mm. Let's keep preaching here. Our life is designed by God to make progress of spiritual things. You will be stronger today than you were yesterday. We're ever growing, ever increasing. Our life is designed by God to make progress of spiritual things. See, there are two kinds of Christians. Now, I'm, talk, I'm talking right now between, between Gaius and Demetrius. They're good. Our, our, our life is designed by God to make progress of spiritual things. So in other words, you ought to be stronger in healing, stronger in finance, stronger in everything you do. Why? Because you're growing daily instead of Sunday. You see what I'm saying? What a blessing that is. Why? Why do we preach faith so much? Faith is the thread of the fabric of God's clothes. This uh, sport coat is made up of threads. When it's put together by, a quote, some master, someone, it becomes a garment, but it has no life in it until I get in it or until you put it on. Right? In other words, there are a lot of churches that look like mannequins. They got nice clothes, but there's no life in it. It's not, it's a church, not the church. Not being critical here, being truthful. I'm not criticizing anybody. You see, I have to tell people this. See, for years, I would never say anything against anyone, anytime. Until I began to read the scripture and Jesus was standing in front of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. He said, you're a bunch of snakes, hypocrites, and vipers. Who? You can't misunderstand that. <laughs> this is Jesus talking. This is the son of the living God. He said, you're a snake. You're a hypocrite, you're a viper. I thought they certainly deserved it. Lord, move out the way. I'll slap them for you if you like me to. <laughs> but then he takes his disciples and goes into uh, up the mountain. And, and, and then he says this, beware of the leaven. A little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. He said, they're snakes, the hypocrites and vipers. I thought, now wait a minute here, Jesus. Excuse me. Excuse me. Aren't you talking bad about them behind their back? That makes sense, huh? Well, you know, is that, is that walking in love? 
Yes, it's called walking in truth. And the Lord gave me this statement that helped me greatly. He said, Jesse, you're not being critical. You're being truthful. If it's the truth, you can say it to someone's face. You can say it behind the back because the truth sets you free. See the difference? There's a vast difference there. See, you think you're talking bad. No, you're speaking the truth. You see what I'm saying? It's not being critical. You see, uh, gossip comes camouflaged as concern. You can tell that stuff. I don't, you hear this? I don't know if this is really real, but listen to this. Ah, now nah, you're being critical. But if it's truthful, you're not being critical. And if Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. And if he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. And if he's the life, the devil can't kill you. He you said he's not a truth or some truth. He is the truth. That's that walking in truth that, that John is talking about, Gaius and Demetrius. They picked up the spirit of Christ through the apostle John. Diatrophes had the same thing. He went well for a while. Who did hinder you? Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? There's one, I love, uh, uh, the cotton patch translation, say, you dumb, stupid fish heads. What's your problem? <laughs> I think it's something like it. You know, you can't misunderstand cotton patch, boy. I tell you something. Listen to me again. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. In you. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. See, you're thinking in Christ. No, no, in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So like I say it all the time, the only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you. Or the Jesus in me. Because the only way you're going to please God is through faith. Let me say it again. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. Huh. Yeah, see, that was Demetrius. That was Gaius. Can I be a blessing to you? You know, we didn't know we were doing Gaius' job and Demetrius' job when we first got saved. We went to a church called Terrebonne Full Gospel Church. Is that the name of it? Terrebonne Full Gospel Temple or something like that. Temple. So when they would have a guest speaker, and you got to understand something, ladies and gentlemen, I gave all my money away. I had a lot of money. I have been rich. <laughs> I have been filthy rich. Now I'm very super cleanly rich. <laughs> I ain't filthy no more. <laughs> <laughs> because when I work for the devil, I mean, he, oh yeah, I, I, I gave all my money away because I thought, well, you know, you, can't, you, you got to be a Christian. You have to be poor. See, I believed the lie. I didn't know. I gave it away. And you know what? Through my giving, it blessed a lot of church and blessed a lot of people. It's a blessing. Well, two and a half years later, I, I became a normal person. What does that mean? That means like you, I financed the house. I mean, I mortgaged the house and financed the car. So I had notes, a house note, car note. And I had a good job. I was working with Shell Oil Company. And they really liked me. They called me the golden boy of Shell. That's it. That's exactly the truth. I mean, it's amazing. Boy, the Lord gave me favor and gave me intelligence how to handle that job. Make a long story short. I'm, I'm out in the front yard, going, on the side yard. And the Lord said, give me all your money. Now, let me tell you about giving all your money. I'm talking about taking Jody's piggy bank, flipping out the coins. Nothing. Zero. And I went, uh... Because the first thing came to my mind was this. Well, how am I going to pay this house note? How am I going to pay this car note? Ah, oh, but I got faith. I said, your will be done. And that's when I heard my Abraham call concerning finance. I walked in and Kathy said, let's do it, Jesse. I said, she's so innocent. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> She believes that I'm going to take care of her, but she don't know she ain't going to have no food tonight if we do all this. <laughs> In my mind, I never said nothing because I always took care of Kathy, made sure. And I come walking on the side of the house and I heard this because it, it was King James. It was King James. It was like an Abraham thing. Jesse, because thou hast done this and not withheld from me everything that you have. I will bless you like you've never been blessed before in your life. You will do much greater than you've ever done as working for the devil. You better get ready. And from that day forward, the next day, prosperity begin to hit me spiritually, physically, financially. Oh, God, man. And I thought, why? Well, get the goosebumps and think about it. Lord Jesus, man. It was, and he's still doing it. 
So don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. That's Deuteronomy 8.18 working. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. To do what? To be a blessing. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that's true. I gave everything I had to God. But you know what? You can't outgive God. I have tried. You can't do it. Listen, faith is how you please God, and your faith will always be a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. I mean, I believe in growing daily, not just Sunday. Man, I mean, I go to church every day. I bring church with me. It's inside of me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I mean, it's a blessing. See, God has designed you and me to, to progress in spiritual things, not just on Sunday, but every day. See, that's how you reach your destiny and get to your destination. See, because if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know when you get there? You got to have conversation with God. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Con not just prayer, but conversation like this. Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. I'm not just, listen, I, I do that. Been doing it for I don't know how many years. Why? I want a God I can talk to. That's what I'm talking about. So that's what I mean, to grow spiritually in things every day. You know, no matter where you are in your faith walk, there's always room for growth. I mean that, room for growth. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, bless these people. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let them hear these words that I'm speaking, that it gets in their heart and their faith grows and they receive what you want them to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can tell I like this message because I've met these two kinds of Christians all my Christian life. And I thought, why are they the other side? Why aren't they what God wanted them to be? What is the problem? Why? You know, and then I realized something here, that people are always looking at themselves instead of looking at Almighty God. Oh, I'm starting to preach again. I can't help myself. Stay right there. I want to show you a few things that are going on here at the ministry. I'll be back in just a moment to speak another word to you. You're going to be blessed. Watch. I believe that God has placed within each one of us a deep desire to live a better life. Whether it's a life free from pain, fear, or lack of any kind, God wants to bring that to pass for you. In my book, You Are Designed for Glorious Living, you'll discover how to achieve the better life God has for you. You know, long before you took your first breath, God had designs on you for glorious living. You are designed for glorious living. Available at JDM.org. There's a world that needs to be saved. Our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus to that world. That is why we here at Jesse the Planet's Ministries believe the unbelievable and operate in the impossible. God is continuing to direct us to expand our outreach to more people in more places and through more ways than ever before. We are advancing into the frontiers of ministry to change more lives through one simple question. Do you know Jesus. Listen to me, it is beginning. The light of Jesus is shining higher and brighter and further than ever. People from all over are responding to the message of Jesus. Nothing can stop the light of God's love from reaching people and changing lives. Partners, I can't thank you enough for what you do for this ministry. 46 years of preaching and never had a financial deficit. Why? You hear me say it all the time. I trust you. You trust me. We both trust God. 
and we reach people. We change lives one soul at a time. You've heard me say it probably thousands of times. For every dollar given to my ministry, give me a soul into the kingdom. And I mean that sincerely. So thank you for your faithful financial support. I tell you, I am more energized at the older I get. Why? Because of you. Trust me, and I will not break that trust because God's word is so true. Also for your August partnership, we're offering a powerful message entitled, Christianity is a revealed religion. Listen, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you have more than just religion. You have life and that more abundantly flowing inside of you right now to the full. I mean, to, that people can drink from your life. How do I get it? I encourage you to get that copy by going to jdm.org and order it today. It will bless you. That's our website. In fact, look all over that website. There's some wonderful things there, and it's all designed with you in mind, and I hope you enjoy it. Let me tell you something. God is real. He's more real than most people. The spiritual world is so much bigger than this natural world. People say, do you ever get depressed or discouraged? No, I ain't got time for that. No, I don't like what I see in the political realm. I don't like all that, but I don't have time for that. My, I'm like Jesus at 12 years old. I'm about the Father's business. And you know, sometimes they even act like I'm 12 years old. <laughs> you know? I have a passion, a passion for Jesus Christ, a passion for people's lives, a passion to see people saved. Starting to preach against here. I mean, I just do that all the time. And that's what it means. I mean, I, I, that's my life. That's what I do. Now, don't forget next week. You know why? There's a message I'm going to preach entitled, What Does It Mean to Love God? Oh, some people say things, but you know more by action than by words. So thank you for watching. And partners, thank you for helping me reach people today. Nothing too small and nothing too big. Your donation is greatly appreciated. See you next week. Bye-bye. Jesse Duplantis Ministries is reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time more than ever before online. So like us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay connected to all the exciting things happening at Jesse Duplantis Ministries. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I got a new product for you entitled The Two Kinds of Christians. There are two. There's some people that go to a church, but they're not in the church. Vast difference. There's two kinds of Christians, and you need to be the right one. I hope you can order this today. The two kinds of Christians will be a blessing to you. It will give you revelation of knowledge, and you'll know what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it. Get it today. We must love him with the whole force of our deepest conviction and our highest self. In other words, nothing should be in front of that to love God. This is more than religion, ladies and gentlemen. This is relationship and fellowship.